Aside from this just being a life update, this is really your reminder to do it while it's imperfect. You get to be mediocre and you're doing the world a huge disservice when you neglect your purpose just because you feel like it's not perfectly prepared to be shared. You have no idea who you can liberate from the confines of their mind when you liberate yourself. Hey Blossoms, welcome back to my channel. I haven't been on my channel at all in 2024 and that is just a consequence of me taking everything in my life too seriously. So before I get into it, I just want to kind of show you guys a little bit of what life has looked like over the past five months. I'm not really sure. <laughs> Honestly. You see the neutrals? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. If your family doesn't have a theme, you're lame. Like, subscribe, and if you don't subscribe, we come to find you. Period. And that's enough, because I don't wanna, I don't want them to think it's a threat. I don't want them to think it's a threat. You know? Hey, blossoms. So I've been, boop. I've been recording for a few days, and I haven't really came to say hello or tell you guys what's even happening. Um, but I'm at home in Illinois and I'm just having a very great experience. <laughs> I don't know what the words would be. Look at my room, like so cute, so 2007 coded. Um, coming home has always been super, super emotional for me, especially the past five years. Coming to my dad's house in general is emotional even before the past seven years or so because my parents aren't together. And so even though I grew up in this house, I'm always back and forth between houses. And then obviously I went through a lot of trauma that just made it hard to come to Illinois anyways in general. I wanted to, I guess I really wanted to just find moments of beauty and joy and happiness in this trip and really document those and remind myself that this isn't a place that's only filled with grief and this is a place that I love and this is a place that I've known most of my life and have had so many good experiences here. So Merry Christmas, it is Christmas. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to really capture the love and some make create something that I can look back on and be like, wow, like I love this place despite everything that I've been through. And also, to really encourage me to finally open up about what Trinity's Garden is, where, how it's rooted. I just really want to explain to y'all, like y'all are the blossoms and y'all go hard. I love you guys, but you guys don't really even know where the idea of Trinity's Garden came from and anything about my journey. And so I'm hoping that I can take this love and this motivation and translate that into finally talking about my story and we just really need to start 2024 off in truth and in purpose and in joy peace love all of that so i'm here and as always i love you so much thank you for being here with me sharing the space with me i'm sure i'll talk to you guys again throughout the vlog but it's really just going to be a montage of me falling in love with my city again and just being present in the times that i'm here so now 
camera shy i have been away from my channel for a really long time and i have a lot to say and i've been thinking about a lot so i'm like this is probably a good time for me to come back on my channel i don't even know if you noticed that i was gone but i was gone from youtube for quite some time um really using the time to think too hard about everything honestly and that's kind of what this video is about is me just aligning with my highest self and with things that I enjoy doing and just not taking things too hard and too serious because life is literally never that serious ever overall I really just want to sit down and talk to you guys because I know I'm not the only person who feels this way like I know I'm not I know I'm not crazy I'm a little crazy but I know somebody else feels this way too, so I definitely want to sit down and have a chit chat. And hopefully, we can start off strong with back to our chit chats, back to our sit downs, because I feel encouraged, so I want you to feel encouraged. And yeah, so yeah, let's go play a little tennis and just get the vibes. I know y'all miss the nice, chill, comforting vibes. I hope you do, and I hope that's what you feel coming to my channel because that's what I try to give to you guys i just really want to create a calm and nurturing peaceful space in aurora if you cannot tell by the gloominess the sun does not come out in illinois except for two months where'd you find your vest at by the way this yeah where was it uh I know when y'all come to your parents house you never know if what you're eating is a day old or like 15 days old that's how i feel about these wings Hot. i'm gonna eat them still mm. definitely 10 days 
Has anyone ever made friendship bread? Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I know you've made it. <laughs> Let me see it. Hold on. I, I gotta get the out of here. So it's like the sisterhood of the traveling pants. Is that what that movie was called? Yes, but I... Because we're feeding, there's yeast in here. We're feeding it. Mm -hmm. And so this will... Oh, am I allowed to say anything? Yes! So they what? like you. That video we did together was just a hit. <laughs> um, so this is active yeast is in here, and so it's going to be cool. Science is cool. The Tomorrow the bag's going to blow up like this. Oh, it, because it the gets yeast, even bigger day yeah, by day? The, the, we're making ice cream now. We are, this is a homestead, my mom says. <laughs> so we have plants growing over there under the grow light. We're making bread, ice cream, the eggs we get from the farm I'm across the street. I'm no Nara Smith, I'll tell you that right <laughs> now. I am not her. I Okay, so now we're caught up. Um, in December 2023, I graduated with my master's in counseling. And you know, I have been a student literally my entire life. I remember getting towards graduation, I really was so excited to just be a worker. Like I just wanted to work a job, not work a job and be a student. Like I was really excited just to work a job. I got my degree and that whole week leading up until my last day of my internship, I just couldn't wait to feel it. You know, that thing that you spend all these years, like seven years striving for, like I just couldn't wait to feel it. And I remember taking my grad pictures and afterwards it was called my mom bawling my eyes out because I'm like, it's like not that I didn't care about getting my master's, but I didn't care about getting my master's. I had spent all this time doing essentially what I was told was the right thing to do or the right path to go. So I went to grad school shortly after undergrad, put my head down and worked two years to achieve this goal. Like the expectation kind of was, you know, you get your master's degree and then you have the answer, the stability, right? It's kind of like I use school as this pipeline for financial freedom. And I mean, school can definitely be that for a lot of people, a lot of career fields, right? School does open up a lot more doors. And I'm not saying that it didn't open the doors for me. It definitely did, right? Like I got a job immediately after graduation. But along my spiritual journey, many times I've recognized that the societal value that we place in school is just a scam wrapped in a shiny bow that's labeled as career stability. But I don't know, I don't know. It's like, even though I'm aware of the utter pointlessness of of school and academic achievements I still crave them which is pretty much the theme of like my entire life joining organizations doing community service leading organizations like I'm always chasing after that thing uh, even though I'm not entirely sure what the thing is right it's just the thing that's supposed to that I'm supposed to do and it kind of becomes like this really toxic pattern of having an obsession with a goal, but that obsession eventually devalues the goal. It's kind of hard to explain, but it's like I get really fired up for a goal to the point where I know I'm gonna get it because I'm fired up about it, so then I don't care about it anymore. So that's pretty much exactly how I felt when I got my degree. Like, okay, cool, I know I was gonna do it. I've been saying I was gonna do this since I was a kid, both my parents have master's degrees, like, it is what it is, right? And I just remember, like, immediately getting into that cycle of the work routine, right? Showing up at my nine to five, doing what I'm supposed to do, and just feeling so... Not, I won't say I was didn't feel fulfilled. I feel very fulfilled in the work that I do, but it still felt like I wasn't doing the right thing all the way. Oh, and I definitely wasn't making time for the things that I enjoy, like sitting down like this. And so I was in the shower and I'm like breaking down. There's been so many breakdowns this year. 
I remember just talking to God and just saying like, you know, why do I feel this way? I did all of the right things. And God said, who told you to do that? I said, wait, 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 huh? What? Say letter. And like he said, who told you to do that? And I know a lot of people struggle with when they're hearing God versus when it's your own thoughts or whatever. For me personally, I know I'm hearing God because it ends up being a situation where it's like, were you silent or were you silenced? And I was very much silenced. Because what do you mean who told me to do that? I thought you, mm, no, right? And so then it was this like earth shattering realization that God maybe didn't tell me to do that, but what I'd seen in my role models, what I'd seen in my friends, right? Everyone's doing it. And again, I'm not, I don't regret getting my degree at all, but I also know that there's so many other things in alignment with my purpose that God has been begging me to do, telling me, and to the point where, you know, if you don't use your purpose, it will just get kind of repurposed back into the world and placed on someone else. And that's what's happened. Several times I've had ideas and I thought they're very unique, very specific to me. And I've sat on them too long and I've seen God use other people that way. And that's fine, right? We're all vessels to bring us back home to the one love of the world. As I kept praying and kept being vigilant of what I was being told, I just really started to recognize my pattern of doing things that I think is the right thing that I think I'm being led to without really consulting God and this is why I'm never satisfied with the goals that I achieve. Anywho, I graduated, got my job, imposter syndrome kicked in immediately because what do you mean I'm someone's therapist? Like what do you mean by that, right? So I felt like because of my age, right, because of my demographic, I was the only black therapist where I work or I am. It, it makes you want to go harder. Like I'm learning interventions, I'm looking up videos, I'm making sure I'm up to date with everything that I know, I'm utilizing my supervisor. Like I'm taking it very seriously by the book, running groups, doing sessions like by the book. And that sort of aimless perfection started to bleed into like every aspect of my life. I really just started to like overexert myself. Like at some point this year, I was working six day weeks just because I wanted to like make more money. But honestly, I think it was just me showing myself that I was worthy and fit of the job if I could do it for six days. And then I also was using it as an excuse. Like, okay, well, if I'm working, I can't film this idea or this video that I know I need to film. And it was like, I constantly kept raising the bar. Like I kept saying, okay, well, once I'm comfortable and set in my job, then it'll be fine. But then I got comfortable and set and I was like, well, no, I need a new background. I need, I can't have all this stuff going on. I need to buy new stuff, put up a new chair, get a new background. Then it was, oh, I need more equipment. I bought a new mic. I bought a new everything. And it's like, I the bar kept moving because I kept expecting perfection from myself. And when I tell you guys, this type of behavior is like it, with everything in my life. If I don't have a grocery list before I go to the grocery store, like a perfectly crafted grocery list, I will have an anxiety attack. I will literally freak out. I take things that seriously. Like it, I need to have a list. I need to be prepared or else the world's going to end. That's crazy. And obviously, like, I did not come to these realizations of how seriously I take things just in one day. It's taken all of the every month of this year and several really hard conversations with God. It became super obvious that me taking things so seriously and not doing things until they were perfect was just a mask for my unwillingness to step into what God wanted me to do. Basically, it's like when I have this high expectation of perfection, it cripples me because like, why would I do it if it's not perfect? Aside from this just being a life update, this is really your reminder to do it while it's imperfect. You get to be mediocre and you're doing the world a huge disservice when you neglect your purpose just because you feel like it's not perfectly prepared to be shared. You have no idea who you can liberate from the confines of their mind when you liberate yourself. If you haven't read Our Deepest Fear, it's a poem by I think Marianne is her name, Marianne Williamson, and she says, your playing small does not serve the world. And that resonates so well with me. Who are you to keep me from my purpose because you want to have your purpose presented to me in a perfect way? 
put, 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 put all these peas, but I wasn't expecting you to be perfect. And so you're putting all of this pressure on yourself to show up in the most, you know, poised and wonderful way when that's not what I needed. And that perfection is keeping you from stepping into spaces where God opened that door for you a long time ago. For me, it definitely boils down to the lack of self-love. When you have conditional love of self, of course you don't want to show up imperfectly because that is a reflection of your self-worth. But that's not real, right? We should all strive for unconditional love of self so that I can show up in any space, however, and know that I am still just as worthy. And that's kind of what I've been striving for, right? Now, this video is not perfect. This is not necessarily the original vision I had for this video, but I'm working on showing up authentically without filters, without a million edits. Obviously there's edits, but I'm working on being myself and being okay with the product being whatever it is because I know that there may be something or someone who needed this, who needs to hear this. And this is all just a ripple effect from my purpose. So if I'm waiting and waiting and waiting to serve it up on this luxurious platter with all the good lighting, the best camera, the best edits, the best music, I'm never going to step into that purpose. And to be honest, it's almost like like you're making yourself small so that you can be more digestible, right? You want to make sure that everyone gets every point that you had and people can really receive it well, but that's not my responsibility. My responsibility is to utilize my being to step into what God has placed on my heart so that others can kind of take it how they want right that's why I always say in a lot of my videos I hope that this falls on the ears that need it nothing in life is that serious right nothing in life ha ever has been never will be never was that serious like trying to plan and prep for everything is just not realistic like of course certain things you have to but if it's to the point where it's crippling you and you're doing nothing because you're waiting on something to be more perfect you're you're doing too much it's not that serious it is not that serious like look around and be open-minded to the vast infiniteness of life i promise you once you get out of your head and into the world you will start to see that nothing in our world is a reflection of perfectness when we start to operate in this way where we're light and we're being and we're laughing it's impossible to deny the fact that Life is imperfect. When I really step out and I look at nature and people, I see so much imperfection. Imperfection is what keeps us going. Nothing is perfect and it is not that serious. I just hope that you can be liberated from the idea that things need to be perfect. And I hope that you can expand and really start to fall in love with yourself and allow yourself to show up in the most imperfect way possible obviously this doesn't go for everything but it goes for sure for the things that you've been holding back on because you don't have the equipment because you don't have the clothes the hairstyle do it now or you're never gonna do it i personally am striving to get to a place where i can show up imperfectly because that's how you can start to really love yourself so i hope that you guys missed me as much as i missed you i have a lot of content planned so hopefully i can take my own advice and not wait until it's the most flawless thing i can just record and do it that's what i want to do i'm happy to be back i'm happy to see you guys but for now blossoms i love you i love you i love you thank you for watching and i'll see you in my next video bye